So today we're gonna to talk about the most important blood test that you should get. It's extremely vital, yet no one's getting this test done, okay? And it measures something called insulin resistance. And the name of the test is called HOMA IR, Homeostatic Model Assessment. And what they do is they actually measure fasting glucose and fasting insulin. The problem is that when you measure just glucose, you actually never see the, what's happening with the insulin. And I'm gonna explain why this is so important, but insulin resistance is rarely ever tested, yet is probably one of the most common problems out there. It's behind nearly every health problem, especially of a chronic nature. We're talking about metabolic syndrome. We're talking about syndrome X. We have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, prediabetes, fatty liver, et cetera, uh, even cancer, cardiovascular problems, problems with the kidney, problems with the eye, um, just having belly fat, and of course, diabetes. Insulin resistance is at the heart of that. Definitely get this test done. An optimum um, level would be between three and eight. Uh, low would be less than three. High is greater than eight. If you're lower than three, it could mean you're on the ketogenic plan and you're doing intermittent fasting, or potentially, if you're not on that plan, it could mean diabetes type one when you don't have enough insulin. But anyway, I wanted to, um, first of all, tell you this is a very important test and then explain a little bit about insulin resistance. All right, so what causes insulin resistance? What is it, okay? First of all, insulin resistance is a problem more with the receptor. The endocrine system is a superior communication system. We have glands and we have hormones, and it follows the law of communication. So we have the pancreas that sends a signal, communicates to a cell, and the signal, one of the, one of the hormones is called insulin, that's the one we're gonna talk about, and it's supposed to connect into the cell right here. And then there should be a feedback a mechanism that sends another signal back, letting the pancreas know that that information was received, okay? And then this will stop. But what happens is when you increase too much insulin, okay? So we're talking about amounts, and we're talking about also chronically over time, the cell through its protective mechanism starts shutting down. And this, is, this also explains why you have antibiotic resistance, too many antibiotics or drug resistance. If you go to a, I don't know, a concert where there's very loud music, okay, a rock concert, and in the next couple of days, you could barely hear anything because your receptors in your ear start shutting down that sound to protect against the damage from that high level of sound. So this is a protective mechanism because too much insulin is dangerous to the body. So that's exactly what it is. Your body is trying to protect you by developing insulin resistance, okay? Now the problem is, if this is resisting, you don't get the feedback. So the pancreas keeps communicating. It starts talking more and more and more because uh, no one's listening to the communication. So just try this with a friend or relative. Just ignore them and see what they do. Uh, they'll just keep talking, all right? In, in volume, they might shout at you. But this is what happens. So when you have insulin, too much insulin, and then you start developing insulin resistance. So insulin resistance comes from too much insulin, okay? Sounds pretty obvious, but the insulin resistance then will cause a fatty liver, and a fatty liver can cause more insulin resistance, and insulin resistance can cause more insulin. So it's just, you can see that it's a, it's a vicious cycle. Um, so what causes too much insulin? several things. One, it's too many refined carbohydrates, sugar, starches, things like that. Also, frequent eating, regardless of what you eat. So if you're eating every three hours, which basically that's what's recommended, they will tell you to do that. And by the way, they will also recommend um, that your carbohydrates are 65% of the total calories being carbohydrate. That's what they recommend. I'll get to they in a second. So we have carbohydrates and frequent eating. Okay, that's why we have all the 
healthy snacks and the snack foods. And then a fatty liver will also increase insulin because it causes more insulin resistance. And then insulin resistance causes more insulin. So you can see that it's not just the carbohydrates. There's other things that can occur as well. All right? So the two things that uh, we need to solve if we're going to fix this problem, we need to normalize insulin, and then we have to decrease the time that your body is exposed to insulin. And this is why healthy keto is a lower carbohydrate diet, and intermittent fasting um, really brings down the insulin because you're not constantly exposing this receptor to insulin. That's how you reverse it. And another thing that happens is when people do keto, if they have a very severe problem with insulin resistance, okay, and they, they're going to have a fatty liver, and they're going to have a belly, a lot of times they will get upset or complain that the belly is not going away fast enough in the first couple of weeks. You have to realize that the first place that a person loses fat is in the liver, okay? The liver will dump the fat first before you lose this right here. In the process, you might also gain more proteins, which are a little bit heavier per volume, because when you fix insulin resistance, you can finally start absorbing amino acids. Insulin resistance blocks a lot of, a lot of things. Um, uh, nutrients like, like potassium, um, vitamin D, vitamin C, uh, minerals. So when you have insulin resistance, you can't absorb nutrients anymore. And all this extra sugar that can't go in the cell basically is being converted to fat. It's being crammed in the liver, around the organs, around your belly, and there's no limit to where it can go. So it just starts spreading over and filling everything up. So there's going to be a certain point in time that this mechanism is going to break down because your pancreas can only work for so long before it becomes exhausted, especially the cells that produce insulin. And now we're going to have less and less insulin. Okay. If your diet has not changed and you're still doing the carbohydrates that are recommended because they told you to do that, what will happen is your blood sugars will start going up because we no longer have the insulin to push the blood sugars down. So now we get prediabetes and then diabetes. Okay, so diabetes takes time. Uh, but what happens first is insulin resistance because there's too much insulin. And that's the reason I'm recommending this video is because very few people even know that there is a test for insulin resistance called HOMA IR and they rarely get it. What's mainly focused on is the blood sugars to check the blood sugars. So let's just talk about the medical treatment real quick for that. So what is the medical treatment for insulin resistance? Metformin is one, okay? Problem is if you take metformin, and you don't fix the diet, it continues because metformin does help the receptor receive more insulin, but you haven't really fixed the deeper issue, which is the carbs just being dumped in. And plus, this has some uh, side effects as well, which we're not going to get into in this video. And also what happens because of the consequences of too much insulin and all these different problems, uh, the medical treatment is really just to treat all the complications for example, of diabetes. Uh, so they'll treat your high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, um, they might thin your blood. And so you're, you're just in this uh, situation where you have all these symptoms being treated, where the actual root cause is being ignored. So the question is why? Are these people that stupid they can't see the obvious? Or is it for other reasons? I'll let you decide. But in the medical profession, there's just a lot of confusion on what causes what, and what's related to this, and this is associated with this, and we have risk factors, and people don't know what to do. But they do recommend a diet, okay? They recommend a diet. Now, who is they exactly? I can't really tell you exactly, but I know it's a combination of the uh, USDA, the FDA, government agencies, with the food manufacturing companies together, with the medical profession as one group. I don't know exactly what you would call that group, but we just, we'll just call them they. But the mainstream recommendations are 65% of your total calories being carbohydrates. Now that is 293 grams of carbohydrates on a diet composed of 1,800 calories, okay? Now with keto, we're recommending 20 to 50 grams. 293 grams of carbohydrate, you will create so much insulin resistance, it's crazy. 
So I find this fascinating because we're, we have this group that has these recommendations that is causing insulin resistance, yet we put the same group that caused the problem in charge of fixing the problem. What is wrong with this picture? Yes. I don't get it. And I want to show you a couple more things related to the food pyramid. Um, this is what's recommended. Half of your plate should be whole grains. Like whole grains are a lot better than refined grains, right? Second recommendation, eat sugary desserts less often. They don't even say don't eat sugary desserts. They say eat them, but less often. What do you think people are going to do? They're going to snack on them through the day. Oh, here's another one. This is a good one. Occasional choices, not every day. Okay, so they're not telling you not to eat these, but just eat them occasionally. Cakes, cookies, ice cream, sausage, hot dogs, because of the fat. So they kind of mix these, all these things in together because of the fat, right? But what about the carbs? And then here's one. Buy fruit that is dried, frozen, and canned, as well as fresh fruit. Now, why do they have the fresh fruits last? And lastly, top your fruit salad and baked potato with low-fat yogurt, okay? All right, guys, in summary, sorry for this long video, but um, this is the test that you want to get called HOMA IR. Ask your doctor to get this test, look at it, see where you are, and get on keto and IF. I have a link down below of exactly how to do this healthily. Thanks for watching. So if you want to get notified with all my content, click the notification bell next to subscribed.